So if you've been following my series on the Academy, which is uh, like Andy Warhol, uh, we've been looking at, you know, one of my passions uh, in school many, many moons ago uh, was screen printing. And basically in the Photoshop realm is how I kind of do something similar uh, today and everything else with it. So in this film, we're going to be looking at how we create a simple action to uh, pretty much produce some amazing images. And then from there, if we can get the basics done to begin with repeatable action, then we can actually go in and actually be creative with that image in, in an individual way to each photograph, as it were. So if we, uh, I was looking at the this one here to begin with. Okay, so uh, let's press the F12 key and basically see what it's like. And if we go in and we just press the action that we created on the Academy uh, in 2022, which is uh, called Screen Print 22, uh, this goes through a series of um, adjustments um, using smart filters, of course, to make the differences, including um, oil paint and stylization, uh, threshold adjustments, some shadow, uh, and basically we get to uh, an instant image. Whereas if we now look in the layers, uh, we're ready to paint and we can go in and actually remove parts of the photograph if need be, or bring back more information. It, it really does love big highlights and uh, it, does, it works equally as well, this one, whether it's in the likes of um, color or black and white and things really. So um, again, let's make this action again fresh. And then in the second part, we'll uh, look at how we take it to the next level. So uh, press F12 key, just resets the image to as it opened up. And remember, even though we're in a black and white image here, we're technically ignoring the image that we're in. All right. So if we come up into our action palette, um, I'm just going to click into the um, Cleghorn Art one, which is where I kind of collect my things like pencil sketches and so on. And I've already got one here, which is Screen Print 23, no selection. But let's just make Screen Print 23, which is a, a version of 22, just so you can see what we're doing. So let's hit the plus, which creates a new action. So we're going to go into Screen Print 22 and oh, 23 even. And we're, let's just give it a bit of a color. Let's go red, press record. So remember with an action, it's a macro, it's recording everything that we're doing within its kind of remit and everything else within things. So first of all, uh, we need to duplicate the layer. So just control J to duplicate the layer. And we're just gonna go into the properties, scroll down here and we're gonna uh, remove background. Now, even though I'm going to hit the remove background option, uh, we could work by selecting the subject and duplicating the subject at this point. If we come up into layers now, we'll see that we can't really see what's happened because the background layer is switched on. If we switch that off now, that is recording it, remember, in the action. In this case, we've already got this top layer, which is layer one selected. And we're now going to uh, convert this into a smart object uh, or a smart filter. So we're just going to go into filter, convert to smart filters, pressing OK. And then within here, we're going to add some stylization. Um, if we're going, for, first of all, into filter, and then we're going into uh, stylize and next into oil paint. Uh, 10, 10, 1, 10 uh, is a kind of a starting point for you. Uh, but again, um, we, it's just really blurring the details out is really what it's going to hap happen. So kind of smudging things. And we're going to repeat this several times by just going up into the fil uh, filter and oil paint. But we don't want to use this because we're in an action mode. Just in case we've made some changes, whatever it is, we want to use the shortcut alt Control f So in this case, we're into um, alt Control f pressing OK. Hold Control F again, and run this uh, around about um, four or five times. Would help if I press the F button, not the Enter key mark. It's been a long day. There we go. Uh, and you can see it's pretty much gone pretty blur, uh, blurry. But what we've got is some interesting shapes. And that's really 
what we're trying to achieve. So remember, all we're doing in that last command is using the shortcut, which is repeat the last fill to use, Alt Control F, yeah? Um, so we could click it onto that one and press OK. Uh, here now, we'll just go in quickly and open up the shadow information a little bit. And then we'll just go into image adjustments and threshold. And we'll just uh, put it in around about 120. Uh, leads a little bit more, in fact. Remember, this is an action for all. So let's go 124. There we go. OK. And uh, pretty much we're done with this one. So let's duplicate this one now, Control J. And then all we really need to do is go into the threshold, double clicking onto the threshold. And now we're going to increase the threshold uh, to make a little bit more white, a little bit more black. So let's push that up to about 150. Remember, try not and analyze it just based on this image. But why we're doing it in smart fil uh, filters and we have a mask here is that we can go in and actually readjust it if we so wish. Uh, let's go round that up to 150 anyway, is it? One, oh, press OK. Um, <clears throat> so I'm pretty much done. I just need to uh, get ready to paint o uh, over the image. So that would be press B for brush. And in this case, we're going to go in and choose a brush. We're going to use a hard brush. And then we're going to press D for default. And uh, we're ready to go. We may as well, though, come back down to the background layer at this point and click on to the um, a new layer adjust adjustment. In this case, we're going to go to the solid color. And we're just going to go and choose a color. It doesn't really matter what it is because we can go in and change this at any stage. If we want to, then we can switch this off or leave it there. That's really down to you. I'm going to leave mine on. And then coming back up onto the uh, top here, we'll now uh, add ourselves in a mask, and then we're ready to paint. So if you go back into the action, we'll press the stop. And then at this point, all I need to go in and do is kind of paint out some of the image area and things. So. Scroll out there and just add in more white if there is any. And we'll just go and test this on a few more images as well. If I kind of take away too much here, just press X to put white back on top, of course. And we can go in and add a little bit more of that definition back into the image. Let's go X again, smaller brush. Here we go. And we're pretty much done. So uh, in that case, we've created a uh, an action to repeat. Let's test it. Remember, we've pressed stop here. So let's press F10, uh, sorry, F12 to uh, reset. And then we'll go into screen print 23. Or if we went into button mode and we scroll down, we look for red. Here's the red screen print 23. We hit the play. And if we're lucky, it's going to do ev everything for us ready. It's a little bit of a while because it's a big action running. OK, and all I've got to do then is in layers, make sure because it's an, a new action I just created that it has selected the mask. And now I can go in and basically uh, repaint in back the parts that I want. Remember, black uh, hides and white reveals. Yeah. So that's what we're doing by painting the black onto the mask. We're now showing more. So a black mask will hide everything. A white mask will show everything. And what we're obviously doing is with the black paint onto a white mask, we're kind of paint, uh, painting uh, uh, the areas to protect within the image itself. Great. So uh, let's do exactly the same thing. And we'll just click on to, let's close that one down. Uh, nope. I uh, can't show a nude image there, but we can do this one. So let's press F12 key. Let's go and see how that works on this image. I will go and get a colored image as well, just to actually test that it works. Because, you know, some, sometimes things can work absolutely exceptionally well 
when they're in monochrome alone uh, compared to everything else. I kind of came, uh, brought this image up to play around with it because I thought, well, if a client really doesn't want a boudoir image big on their wall for whatever re reason, then perhaps they might want some stylized art instead kind of thing with it. So let's just bring in some more of the hair information or take it back a little bit bigger brush. Let's see if there's uh, information down here. It's pretty good that like that. One of the great things about um, screen print, of course, is that these overlapping parts are kind of a part of the whole kind of um, wrong or individual image and things really. Great. Uh, as I said, let's just quickly go into bridge. Let's go and pull a color image. Uh, let's go anyone. In fact, let's open her up. And let's hit the action again, just to see what it works. So remember what we're doing is in the action, it's um, making a duplicate layer, removing the background. Then it's going through uh, via the smart filter, uh, the filters first so we can adjust them. It's adding the stylization of the oil um, paint effect several times. Then we're going into the image adjustments as far as the shadow um, and uh, elements are concerned. And then we went into the threshold. And in the threshold, we did it around about 120-ish and then about 150-ish or the likes of and things really. And so that pretty much shows that it does work on a color image uh, as well. Uh, remember, we then duplicated that layer, um, that whole layer, and we changed the threshold to a little bit of a deeper. We pushed it up to about 150. Then we created a mask, um, and of course you saw me add into the action, which was adding the coloured background on and so on with it. So that's a kind of a, a, a nice way to be able to actually run a Warhol effect before you then start to actually really look at what you can do with that same image. Um, so uh, where we go, we've got another image, so we may as well run it. Let's have a little look. Remember, you can go in and adjust the threshold or adjust more paint if that's what you want to. You can duplicate it even still once we've uh, duplicated the layer. So even though the action is doing the majority of the work, the benefit of having smart fil filters and the two different layers is that we can still go in and basically, yeah, it works great. And even though I've added that colored background in, you don't have to have that colored background if you don't want it in things. Um, if I was going to add a color to her now, just a kind of a one wash color across the whole thing, if I switch the background off, and as long as I've selected um, the one layer, if I go Shift, Control, Alt, E, so that's make a new layer based on all visible layers. So if I'd had the um, purple switched on, and I went Shift, Control, Alt, E. As you can see here, what it's done, it's created a layer with the background, whereas the uh, other one that I created was this one here. So let's just switch that off anyway. So as I was saying, if I wanted to add color to her, we just go into the solid color, find a color that you want to use. Let's go teal, change. Uh, so it only uh, clips to this image and nothing that is below and then use the likes of a blend mode to uh, change the way that it interacts with the image and things. Okay, so that's how we can kind of apply the color. And in the same way, of course, we can change the opacity of the uh, tone if, 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 if we want. And then if I didn't want to go through the changing of the color all the time, uh, a quick way is to just add in a hue and saturation Remember to clip it to this layer if you want, if you wanted to, and then you can just change the actual hue and saturation. If I didn't clip it, so Alt click in between there, you can see now what it's doing. It's actually affecting not only the the color 
on the girl, but it's also affecting the colour on the background as well. So if we are looking for like the Andy Warhol kind of triptych, um, uh, multiple images, and you're looking for all those different kind of things, then it's a great way to be doing it. So um, screen print like Warhol. Hope you enjoyed it.